you should never end your presentation with a questions and answers session. In this video, you will learn how to plan a Q&A session correctly. And that means that you can have a valuable interaction with your audience and get your message across. Let's go. Your next act, Mr. Marcus Seppala. How's it going? My name is Marcus Seppala. I'm a stand-up comedian and TEDx speaker, helping you bring more fun to the corporate stage. On this channel, I share a lot of public speaking tips about how you can better engage with your audience, whether that's on stage or on video. I've been doing public speaking and organizing events for the past 13 years, and in this video, I put together my best tips for planning a Q&A session. Specifically, I'm gonna share when you should have your Q&A session. I'm gonna highlight some bad practices that you should definitely not do, and I'm gonna share some insights on how you can plan for when something unexpected happens during your Q&A session. Stick around to the end of the video where I'm gonna share a bonus tip about how you can manage your Q&A sessions on Zoom and other online meeting tools. This video is part one in my three-part series about Q&A sessions. This part one is about planning the session. Part two is about how to execute it. And part three is about how to answer the questions that come up in your Q&A session. If you want to find parts two and three, have a look at the links in the description below. There you can also pick up my free video conferencing checklist. So today we'll learn how to plan an amazing Q&A session. But first, why should you have a Q&A session in your presentation? For me, the most important reason to have a Q&A session is that it's the only way that you can give your audience what they actually want to hear. We always talk about putting the audience first, but most of the time we're only guessing what they actually are interested in hearing. By putting a Q&A session in your presentation, you don't have to guess anymore what they actually want to hear, and rather you can answer the questions that are most relevant to them. Sometimes you also wonder if your audience understood what you were saying. Once again, here you don't have to guess. By putting a Q&A session, you allow them to ask questions about the things that they maybe didn't understand. Let's begin with the timing of your Q&A session. And the most important recommendation is to never end your presentation with a Q&A session. The thing that people are gonna remember from your time on stage is the last thing you say. And can you imagine if the last thing you say is something like, oh, I guess there's no more questions, that's it for me, bye. That is a horrible way to end your presentation. Rather, you should end your presentation with something powerful. It could be a summary of your main points, or it could be a call to action, what you want the audience to do next. You need some kind of take-home message at the end of your presentation, and you should plan for that kind of take-home message, that kind of call to action, that kind of summary at the end of your presentation. And that means that you need to put that after the Q&A session. So when should you have your Q&A session? My recommendation is to have it in the middle of your presentation. Let's say that you have a 45 minute speaking slot. I recommend that you have 20 minutes of presentation, 20 minutes of questions and answers, and then a five minute summary at the end. There are multiple benefits of this approach. In addition to you leaving on your own terms, this also helps with the short attention spans that people have these days. I think in most cases people don't want to hear a 45 minute speech. Rather they want you to focus on them as the audience members and they want a little bit of interaction. I recommend that you clearly describe the agenda to your audience. Just say I'm going to present for about 20 minutes, then we're going to do 20 minutes of questions and answers, and after that I'm going to come back with some key messages at the end of the presentation. Also let your audience members know that they should hold their questions until the Q&A. And because your presentation is only 20 minutes, they don't have to wait that long. And I think that's gonna help in avoiding interruptions during your presentation. Another way you can do it is to have multiple Q&A breaks throughout your presentation. I'll give you an example from a conference where I presented a few years ago. I had just launched a global employee share purchase plan for our company. 
And in my presentation, I talked about the plan design for perhaps 15 minutes at the beginning. And then I said, does anybody have any questions about the plan design before we move on to the challenges and the learnings that were in the second half? This gave the audience a great opportunity to ask any clarification questions if there was something that I didn't explain well enough. Then I moved on to the challenges and the learnings and then I had a second Q&A session about the whole topic at the end of that block. We're just getting started with these tips, but if you already got some value, hit the like button. Now let's look at some bad practice that you should definitely avoid when you're planning your Q&A session. Here's one that I see at almost every conference. The speaker has a 45 minute speaking slot. After 42 minutes, they say, that's all I got guys. Now we have about three minutes for questions. That is exactly the wrong prioritization. Remember, you need to focus on what your audience is interested in. Therefore, I recommend that you dedicate at least one third of your time to questions and answers. So in that 45 minute presentation, don't plan more than 30 minutes of material and make sure that you have at least 15 minutes for Q&A. Let me tell you about the worst Q&A session I ever saw in my life. Many years ago, I started as a junior consultant at one of the big four accounting firms. The structure of the firms is such that you have the partners at the top, then below that you have directors and managers, and then the consultants and the associates are at the bottom. And this was a training for consultants who had just joined the company. During one of the evening activities, they had a panel discussion where they had a number of partners on stage and us consultants, we were encouraged to ask them questions. The organizers had placed on the tables some pre-prepared questions that they encouraged us to ask them. This was the most pathetic Q&A session I ever saw. Now I understand the problem they were trying to solve. It can be a little bit intimidating to ask questions to the partners if you just join the company, but this is not the right solution. If you feel that your employees are not comfortable asking questions, then eliminate the Q&A session. At the same time, maybe you should think to yourself, what does that say about the company culture if employees are not comfortable asking questions to senior executives? That may be a different problem that requires a different solution and pre-preparing questions in the Q&A session is not the right way to do it. Now let's talk about how can you plan for the unexpected during your Q&A session. There's two situations I want to cover. One is that there are not enough questions and the other one is that there are too many questions. If there are no questions from the audience or there are not enough questions to fill your whole Q&A session, I have two recommendations for you. The first one is to have some backup material ready. This could be something that you think is a good fit for the presentation, but there wasn't enough time to include it in the allotted time. I'll give you an example from one of my workshops. I did a workshop about how to communicate better in virtual project teams. Now part of the workshop was about online meeting, but here is my backup plan. Actually my backup plan was about having a backup plan. So if there would have been no questions, I would have talked about how can you prepare for technical difficulties in your online meeting. That would have been a really good fit for the overall theme, although it wasn't part of the core presentation. Actually, if you would like to see a video on that topic, how to prepare for technical difficulties in your online meetings, let me know in the comments below. That may be the topic of a future video. In that workshop, I didn't actually have to use the backup material because there were plenty of questions, but it's always important to have some idea about what you can do if you don't get enough questions. The second solution that you could apply is that you can cut your presentation short. And remember, you still have your summary that you're going to do at the end. So you can just move to the summary and then you can let everybody know, okay, we are ending this 10 minutes early. I'll give you back 10 minutes of your time. In most cases, nobody's going to complain about the fact that the session ends a little bit earlier. Hit the like button if you got some value from this video already. What about the situation where there are too many questions? Here, my most important recommendation is to still end the Q&A session on time. Remember, you need to do your summary at the end. That's the block where you want to leave your audience with an excellent impression of what you were doing. You have your most important calls to actions in there. So don't skip your summary, even if there are too many questions.
Instead, what you can do is that you can give your audience members a way to continue the discussion with you. One way to do that is to give them your contact details so that they can reach out to you either via email or on LinkedIn or whichever method you prefer. The other way you can do it is that you can say, after this session, I'm going to be over here in the coffee area. If you have any questions for me, just come and chat to me in the break. Both of those methods are great ways to show your audience that you want to continue the discussion, that you want to connect with them, and ultimately you want to give them what they were looking for. They're also a great way to make a more personal connection with your audience and that is going to help you if they ever need to book a speaker in the future and they will remember, oh, you were that guy who was so friendly and helpful even after the speech was over. You weren't just some anonymous guy on a faraway stage. In just a moment, I'm going to jump over to my bonus tip about how you can manage Q&A sessions in Zoom meetings. But if you got some value from this video, please consider subscribing to my channel for more communication tips. Just click the big red subscribe button. And here's the bonus tip about Q&A sessions when you're video conferencing. The great thing about video conferencing is that you don't actually have to physically leave a room for somebody else to get in there. And that allows you to continue the session even after the allotted time. And this works great if you're the last speaker or if you're organizing the whole session on your own. I'll give you an example. Let's say that the online meeting is scheduled from 6 to 7. You can actually tell everybody that even after 7, you will remain on the call and available to answer questions for those people who still want to stay for a chat. Now, most people are going to leave at 7, and that's fine. But for those who really want to connect with you, that's an excellent opportunity to do so right away. You don't have to schedule anything else. You can just keep the meeting going. And one power tip here is to always block your calendar for a little bit longer. In this case, I would block my calendar not from 6 to 7, but from 6 to 8, in case there are these additional questions that come up. When you plan your Q&A session correctly, you're going to be answering those questions that the audience really wants to know about. But sometimes you're on the other side of that. Sometimes you're the one actually asking the question to the audience member. If you want to get better at engaging your audience and interacting with them by asking questions, please click this link here to see my workshop on how to ask better audience questions. If you want to see parts two and three in this series about how to run Q&A sessions, there are links in the description below. There you can also pick up my free video conferencing checklist. Thank you for watching. I will see you in the next video.